Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech where things are currently cruising along pretty smoothly. We're going to tick forward here a little bit. We have guaranteed returns, huh? We'll sell some supplies but minimize impact to the mech bay. That sounds good. So we gained 20,000 sea bills and a minus one tech point penalty for 14 days. That may or may not push us beyond the financial report. I'm not sure if we were going to be there before anyway. But uh, let's find out. I think we should be okay. So let's continue to tick forward here. We're going to see our grasshopper and our low G pool finishing up at the same time. Okay, so next I want to hop into the engineering and get our next upgrade. We're getting really close here. So upgraded arcade will be done in 20 days. Noted. Next, I want to hop into the mech bay and make sure that all of these guys are good to go. They absolutely are, and those were the ones that were most damaged. So I don't expect that any of these others had internal damage. I don't think they did. The financial report is in three days, and we should be able to deploy now. Yeah, that all looks good. So let's hop into the barracks, and let's make sure that everybody's as promoted as they can be for the moment. Hard case can get a point of piloting. That would be absolutely fine here. What else do we see? For Jammer, probably a point of tactics. Training complete. For Clist, a point of piloting would be pretty good, to be honest. That would be absolutely wonderful. For Magus, a point of piloting. Sure. Magus is getting po close to maxed out here. Not quite there yet, but pretty close. For Rook, what do you drive, Rook? Are you a backup? He drives the Marksman SPG. Okay. So we could choose to take Bandit. Or we could choose to take Focus Fire. I think that the minus one recoil is probably worthwhile here. I believe that the SPG has recoil. We may want to double check that. Let's hop over to the mech bay and go into the vehicle bays here. Or actually, we're just going to want to go into the components. I believe we do have a sniper artillery here. Well, let's see here. This weapon has a recoil of three. So, yes. I assume that recoil counts on vehicles as well. We're going to make that assumption, and we're going to proceed as if it does. So that means that focus fire is what we want to take for Rook. Training complete. Okay. So Savarok needs nothing, Squire needs nothing, and Weasel Cakes needs nothing. So we're ready to deploy at this point. And we're only at 10 million sea bills right now. We did take a big hit to our sea bills not too long ago, so that's not shocking, but I'd like to get something that'll build us up a good amount. Ooh, this seems spooky. It's Comstar. It's Comstar, and it's a battle in the Highlands, and reasonably difficult. So I would expect a lot of heavy bombers here, and I kind of don't want to face a lot of heavy bombers right now. So, to that end, we could do like an ambush convoy here. Interesting. This is local government, and it's for Word of Blake. So that would be fine. We could boost up our Word of Blake opinion, get 1.4 million in payment, plus a decent amount of salvage. That's not a free priority salvage. So we just run it straight down the middle, and this would pay for roughly half or so of our financial report. So I think that's reasonably fine. Let's do this. We can deploy this exactly as is. And Darius thinks it will be hard, but we're going to go anyway. I'll see you guys after the loading screen. So here we are all loaded up. That was a pretty quick loading screen, to be honest. Let's begin this mission and we'll see what we're up against. So we know we have a convoy, right? And that'll be absolutely fine. Ah, we're against the professional. Here we go. So that's absolutely fine. That looks like a long tom vehicle. Okay, so we know that this is the convoy's route. The convoy's escape point is out over here. So being right up over here sounds good, to be honest. I think this is a good spot to spawn. I think I saw that they were right here. Well, there's something here. That's for sure. Our target is within yeah, okay, so they're right here. So here we see these guys heading over towards that evac point. Noted. So there's spawn protection right now in this first round. We also have a bunch of allied units here. Okay, there's a lot of things going on right now. This long tom obviously needs to be the priority target. 
It's very heavily armored. And we need to eliminate it very quickly. So I'm going to have our archer, or actually it's going to be our crossbow first. This is the 6C crossbow. We're going to have our crossbow back off a little bit over here and take this cover. We're going to have our archer positioning somewhere back over, I don't like this position, but maybe about here. Got it. And taking that position for now. Talk to me. The crossbow X is going to move up over here. And we're going to position aye, aye. there in position to melee attack that long tom. That long tom is absolutely the target. Commander. Next is our Epimetheus, and we're going to position here as well. Oh, I didn't turn that correctly, but I guess this is fine. There we go. Who is moving currently? That's going to be this guy, the rhino. I think that something just didn't move. The rhino moves up a little bit here. That's fine. There's a giant mess of units right in here. And I'm not entirely sure what we've got going on here. Standing so by. our rifleman is going to position right down over here in on cover. And we're going to brace. We do have a bunch of allied units in the area. We have a significant numerical advantage. That's a drillson. Okay. Our black knight, I want to move up over this direction for the moment, although I don't like facing it that way. I want to face it more like this way. Move. So we're going to sprint it, but I'm not a huge fan of that either. For now, our grasshopper can position somewhere around here. Moving to position. And brace. Waiting for and now would be our devastator. And I'd like to get the devastator moving up over this way. We can just make it somewhere around here or so. Actually, I kind of want to put it out over here. What way are they going? to the evac point. Double Are they going to go down the road go. this way? Like, no. They're going to take the road up here and then come down here. Okay, I gotcha. So the Devastator here seems good. I'm going to put the Nidhogg up over here. I'm not entirely sure where we're going to drop bombs. But this is very close quarters. And next up is going to be the Long Tom moving. It didn't move at all. Okay, that is beautiful. I think we had it pinned in. So the Marauder needs to move now, and we'll position that up over here, just kind of blocking them a bit. Okay, phase 17 is going to be this guy, the Banshee. He backs off a little bit and positions out over here. Sure. Pretty weak rear arc on him. Noted. The Marksman SPG, I'm going to put down over here. I don't know where we're going to fire that at yet. Again, this is very close quarters. And the Jerry Rig Demolisher, I kind of want to position down here in position to attack the rear arc on that Banshee. Okay, so we'll do that for now. Next round. So they're going to move their Sleipner up. And what's that going to attack? Rear arc on our crossbow. Okay. I'm under heavy fire. Yes, that is expected. Next up is going to be the Longinus, and that's going to rear arc attack this Banshee. I like that a lot. I very much like the rear arc attack on the Banshee there. When does the Long Tom move? The Long Tom moves phase 16. Primary target okay. damage, Commander. Keep it up. This guy actually did some splash damage to these guys over here. For the time being, that's okay, but that Balrog definitely did some damage to our Black Knight. No doubt about that. Next up is our crossbow. Now, this is our LRM crossbow, and I'm thinking about positioning it somewhere down here. I don't love these positions, though. Yeah, I really don't love any of these positions. It's just slightly awkward because of its rear arc. I think down here is our best bet. So we would position it about here. We can side arc attack the long tom here, and I think that is the play. So we're going to attack the long tom. A huge amount of damage into the side arc of that long tom. And that's okay. The long tom has to go away. 100%. We managed to do about 100 damage to that side arc, plus an additional... 70, an additional 40. Yeah, that wasn't bad. And we protected our rear arc a bit. So the Shiltrin is moving now, and 
firing on the Black Knight. Ooh. Okay. So that's a structure exposure and a heat sink destruction on the Black Knight already. It's doing a lot of splash damage in this area. I'm under heavy fire. Okay. So we're going to have to see what the Black Knight's status is here. This torso. Okay. Potentially a lot of deep heat sinks there. That is potentially not great. So our archer here is going to fire also on this long tom. I would love to see the long tom cease to exist here. We'll see if that happens. Firing everything I've got. It did not. Okay, that's not necessarily shocking. So next up is an allied unit, and we'll see what that does. There's a lot of splash damage going on over here, and the Black Knight is getting focused very hard, which isn't shocking because we weren't able to brace it, and it also only had four evasive. It no longer has the four evasive, to be clear. So the Black Knight is in significant danger. We'll see what our allied unit decides to do. It's going for the rear arc attack on that Banshee, and I love this choice. That actually did a lot of damage to that Banshee. It is a lot less powerful now. Next up is the Rhino FST, and that moves down here. Going for the Chasseur. Okay, that's really good for us. It actually fully missed. Beautiful. I love it. Next up is our Crossbow X. The Crossbow X is going for the side arc attack on the Long Tom, and this should kill the Long Tom. So we don't want that Long Tom to be firing. Although we'd like to capture it. I'm not sure what the mass of it is. It, it might be a little bit too high. It, in fact, it probably is. So the Long Tom is gone. And that was considered an escort unit, I guess. Interesting. Next up is the Banshee. And we'll see what the Banshee does. It's probably going to go for the Black Knight, if I had to guess. It has lost some of its ammunition, though. It backs off. It's not facing correctly to attack the Black Knight. The game froze a little bit here. Okay, it's going for the crossbow. Structure exposure on our crossbow. That's fine. We're going to be wrapping this up relatively soon here. So our Marauder, at this point, can start moving in to attack, like, the Balrog MBT. I feel like we could also get in on the Shiltron. 122 and 185. So the Shiltron is actually the weaker vehicle here. Absolutely noted. Okay, so we can kick here. That'll be fine. Light him up. That Shiltron also has a long time. So, dual long toms there. Bunch of damage to its rear arc armor there, and we tagged it. Seems perfect. Next up is going to be an allied unit. That will be this Shisir. And I would like to see that continue to go for the Banshee or the, hit the rear arc on that Shiltron. But like I said, we have a significant numerical advantage here, and that is great. It went for the Shiltron, and that's a structure exposure. Machine guns into that structural exposure as well, but sadly, no crits. Commander. So our rifleman is next, and I absolutely want to hit the rear arc of this banshee. We're just going to turn and kick. The rifleman is not ideal for kicking, but let's see way. what we get done here. Successful melee attack. There we go. The professional is now out of here, and Subaru is very great. He is unfortunately not dead. Oh, he wasn't even in the mech. Okay. Well, the professional is out of here, and that is good. Next up is our Nidhogg. And I would like to position our Nidhogg somewhere out over, like, here-ish. But I want to be rear arc on this guy. Now, we might splash damage our Devastator here. If that happens, it's okay. I want to eliminate this Sleipner if we can. Got the angle. Taking and it's out of here. Fantastic. Massively overkill. But that's, of course, what we wanted. Beautiful. So the escort is dealt with, and the convoy is 25% gone. But the convoy will be gone very soon. So we took a decent amount of damage from those first couple of salvos, but they were pretty much unable to do anything about this. Now, this was a side arc attack on the Balrog, and they may have stray shot us a little bit there. 
Yeah, I would have preferred a rear arc attack there, but it's okay. Waiting for so I'm going to take the grasshopper up, and we're going to hit the Balrog here. We want to melee the rear arc. Actually, this is a better melee position. This is still rear arc, and we have a better firing angle for down here. So yeah, we'll take this position. Absolutely. Primitive. Light him up. Targeting physical attack. Successful melee on the MBT. And a bunch of damage dealt to that rear arc. We didn't penetrate the armor, but we're not surprised about that. Standing Next by. up, the Black Knight can stand up. The Black Knight is in danger, but as long as we can eliminate these units fairly quickly, it should be fine. I'm going to careful maneuver it over into this cover, and we'd like to protect its left side, so we're going to turn it like on so. And then we can fire on the Balrog or on the Shiltron. Hit odds are better on the Shiltron, and so we're going to take this. We did stray shot our Marauder a little bit there, but I'm okay with that because we destroyed the Shiltron. So it's now 50% gone. There are two vehicles remaining. Next up is going to be our Epimetheus. And the Epimetheus can position here. We can fire on either the Rhino or the Balrog. Hit odds are way better on the Balrog. So we'll take that. Okay, we took it out. Fantastic. We broke through the armor, and I think we only got one missile into the actual exposed area, but that was enough. So at this point, the Marksman SPG could fire at the Rhino FST. It'll do a little bit of splash damage to us. Actually, this is minimum range. So I don't think that we... We could maybe back off over here and fire it. 17.9%. It's probably not even worth firing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, a little bit of splash damage to us, but most of that damage was dealt to the Rhino. Unfortunately, not on a particularly useful side. We can certainly move our Devastator into this rear arc, and I do like these choices here. I think here. Got it, Commander. So we'll position that reasonable hit odds here into the rear arc of this Rhino. I think we missed both of those auto cannons, which is sad. Next up would be our Demolisher, which is going to position again in the rear arc here, but about here for ideal range. Okay, we'll fire on this Rhino. There's absolutely no reason to not fire the, the eye rockets because I don't expect any additional enemies. So light them up. Just a little bit of armor damage there, unfortunately. Not good shots on the heavy rifles. Next round. They move in phase 18. Orders. Okay, so our crossbow X can move up here, and I absolutely would love to put it about... Where can we move? Can we go here? Yes, we can, but we're calculating. Okay, so we can position it about Roger here. That. Beautiful positioning for this. Right into that weakened side arc. I'm even going to fire improved ammo, because why not? All weapons are good. I'll break okay. We did not penetrate the armor there, but we didn't necessarily have to. How much armor is left in that? Oh, only 19? Okay. Well, the Epimetheus, of all things, moves next, which is mildly surprising. Now, we have obstructed LOS here. I'm not going to fire the late AC-20, but we'll fire... I think we'll not fire two medium lasers as well because of heat. Got the end. Taking the shot. Okay. Something along the lines of that. I didn't want to hit this crossbow, so that was why we backed Boy, off on that shot. Damage. We did not manage to break the armor on the FST yet, which is, again, mildly surprising. Its armor is really low. That Harris Hawk didn't do anything. What okay. can I do for you? And our archer is obviously in minimum range here. But honestly, these hit odds aren't as bad as I expected. Yeah, we'll take it. It's still strike. likely a kill. A whole lot of crits there. When I shoot but you, we didn't get the kill on it, remarkably. Lucky. So he moves in phase 18, which is not yet. There's one allied mover first, and then he gets to move. The ally did nothing there. He's firing on the crossbow on that side I'm arc. Taking worse. He did get a head hit there, but that's okay. I can't take much more of this. Okay, so not it's fine. No problem location. whatsoever. He's turbo dead. We just need to shoot at him one more time. Sensor lock? Okay. Eventually, we'll get the opportunity. 
cool. I'm receiving you. So the grasshopper can just position right up over here, light him up. This is potentially in the strong side, but let's see what we've got. Yeah, he's gone. Fantastic. Yeah, we don't need to evac. We're out of here. There's nobody else left. Excellent. So that went pretty quickly. We did take a good amount of damage from a couple of splash damage things there. I believe that we lost one double heatsink in the Black Knight, and that's it? There were a couple of other structure exposures, but I don't think we took any crits in, like, the crossbow. There were definitely some decent amounts of damage coming in, but we were able to deal with it very quickly. So that's good. 1.2 million, and I'm expecting about 200,000 in damage. The crossbow did take some damage in its leg there, but I don't believe there were any crits. The Black Knight did receive a crit. No one else did. So only the Black Knight will need to be manually repaired. Are we interested in taking... Okay, a mobile long tom is 100 ton. Noted. We could just take two long tom artilleries. Which is, of course, hilarious. I do think artillery is far better in vehicles than in mechs because of the knockdown, though. At least on this version. I know that they were changing it for the next version of the game. But in this version of the game, which the next version is currently out, for the record, for this version of the game that we're on, I believe that vehicles are the correct place to have artillery. So we're going to grab three mobile long tom parts, and beyond that, a couple of good FCSs. Not bad. Powered sensor, generic structure, eight long tom ammo. Okay, that's reasonably fine to have around, just in case. That's a lot of long tom ammo, for the record. Eight tons of long tom ammo. Okay. Cool. So that is absolutely fine, and we're going to have to get our repairs done. I'm expecting this to be somewhere around the 200k marker. We took a lot of pointed damage, right? But we didn't take a lot of broad overall damage. We took large amounts of damage in focused areas, specifically the left side of the crossbow and the right side of the Black Knight. So I'm not expecting this to be absolutely killer on the repairs. What do we got, Yang? 175? Yeah, that seems about right. So we do need to do a manual repair on the Black Knight. And so we're going to cancel that one. Everything else should be fine to be auto-repaired, but we're going to have to replace that heatsink. So that's absolutely fine. We'll hop into the Black Knight here and refit that. Cool. So this double heatsink needs to be repaired, of course, and we will absolutely do that. I believe we have a double heat sink in stock. Yeah, we do. We have six. So that'll be fine. And from here, we just need to maximize this armor. And that looks good. No other problems here. As long as we're in the Black Knight, do we want to do anything else? Well, there is a voice cockpit here. That would increase our initiative, which isn't a bad thing. Do we have anything else that we want to put in? Well, we've already got an Energy Accuracy FCS. Does that give Night Vision? It doesn't. We have a Thermal Vision here that we could put in. Do we have a Night Vision in here? That's as opposed to one that's built into our FCS or our sensors, that is. I don't think so. No. Okay. So that is absolutely fine. We could toss in something along the lines of a powered sensor. That would be better than that SLDF that's in there right now. Oh, we already have an active probe. Never mind. So that's not ideal. We've got an engine heatsink plus two already. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else that we want to put in here. We've got the plus two energy accuracy. We could swap that for an FCS improved to get the night vision. And actually, I'm going to do that. I think that the night vision is more valuable for us than the plus one energy accuracy at night. Of course, in the day, it's not useful. But I think that's an overall upgrade since we do fight at night re relatively, re like, reasonably frequently. 
So that'll be okay. We'll get these repairs done pretty quickly. The Black Knight will be done in 11 days. So we're definitely not going to rep or get repaired before the financial report, but that's fine. It is time to put, to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to get all those repairs done, and we're going to continue doing some, I think, limit testing of this current setup. It'll be interesting to find out where its limits lie. Although, taking those long tom shots definitely hurt. There's no doubt about that. You can leave your offering to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Kintogen, Ali Lee, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nix Marty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.